Good afternoon, and thank you for coming here this afternoon for this update into the status of the three homicides in Northern British Columbia. I'd like to begin by reiterating that given the information announced earlier today by RCP colleagues in Manitoba, that the search for the suspects in the three Northern British Columbia homicides has resulted in a discovery this morning. At approximately 10 a.m., RCMP officers located two male bodies in the dense brush. This was within one kilometer from where the items linked to the suspects were found. This is approximately eight kilometers from where Mr. Dick's burnt RAV4 vehicle was located. Manitoba RCMP has confirmed that the autopsies are being scheduled in Winnipeg to confirm their identities and to determine the cause of death. While we are still waiting for the definitive confirmation of the identities of the two deceased men, we believe that they are in fact the individuals that we were searching for. BCRCP investigators have spoken to the families of Leonard Dick, Lucas Fowler, and China Deese and provided them with the latest update. The RCMP will continue to offer support to them, understanding that the traumatic losses they have gone through do not end with the deaths of these men whom we believe to be our suspects. We'll also continue to offer support to the Port Alberni families of the two men as they deal with these difficult developments. Investigators in British Columbia have worked tirelessly since the initial deaths were first reported to us on Monday, July 15th. But I'd like to stress that our investigative efforts have not concluded yet. We still need to ensure that our investigative findings, whether it's statements, evidentiary timelines, physical or digital evidence, continues to confirm our investigative theory and eliminates any other possibilities or suspects. Until that is completed, we will not conclude this file. We continue to consult with BC Prosecution Service with respect to the next steps and are mindful that a positive confirmation that our suspects are deceased does not impact the options moving forward. I'd like to acknowledge that this investigation has been one of the more dynamic and unpredictable that the BC RCMP has recently undertaken. This investigation and the subsequent search efforts have crossed multiple provinces and territories at the same it's also included extremely remote locations and impacted communities and families both nationally as well as internationally. I'd like to thank our law enforcement partners across Canada, the United States and Australia for their support and assistance. In particular, our colleagues within the RCMP in Manitoba who spearheaded the exhaustive and challenging search in that province. The perseverance and dedication has resulted in today's announcement. Finally, I'd like to recognize our partners in the media, locally and internationally, who were instrumental in providing the latest updates from our investigators in a timely, comprehensive manner. The ongoing public engagement and the media coverage was key to public awareness and resulted in police receiving a constant stream of information and over 1,000 tips. Thank you. Bonjour et merci d'être venu ici cet après-midi alors que nous faisons le point sur l'état des trois homicides survenus dans le nord de la Colombie-Britannique. J'aimerais tout d'abord réitérer les renseignements communiqués plus tôt par nos collègues de la GRC au Manitoba. La recherche des suspects des trois homicides survenus dans le nord de la Colombie-Britannique a mené à une importante découverte ce matin. Vers 10 heures, des policiers de la GRC ont trouvé deux corps de sexe masculin dans un secteur densement boisé à moins de 2 km de l'endroit où les objets appartenant aux suspects ont été trouvés et à environ 8 km de celui où le véhicule brûlé a été trouvé. La GRC au Manitoba a confirmé que des autopsies sont pré prévenues à Winnipeg pour confirmer l'identité des corps et pour déterminer la cause de la mort. Alors que nous attendons toujours la confirmation définitive de l'identité des défunts, 
nous croyons qu'il s'agit des, des individus que la GRC recherchait. Les enquêteurs de la GRC en Colombie-Britannique se sont entretenus avec les familles de Leonard Dick, de Lucas Fowler et de China Dees et leur ont fourni les toutes dernières nouvelles sur l'affaire. La GRC continue d'offrir son soutien aux familles des victimes et de les rassurer en leur disant que la mort des deux hommes qui seraient les principaux suspects dans l'affaire ne met pas fin à l'enquête. Nous continuerons également d'offrir notre soutien aux familles des deux hommes de Port Alberni alors qu'elles sont confrontées à cette situation difficile. Les enquêteurs de la GRC de la Colombie-Britannique ont travaillé sans relâche depuis le signalement initial des premiers homicides, soit le 15 juillet. Mais je tiens à souligner que nos efforts d'enquête ne se terminent pas là. Nous devons encore veiller à ce que les conclusions de notre enquête, qu'il s'agisse des déclarations, de chronologie, des faits ou de preuves matérielles ou numériques, continuent de confirmer notre théorie et d'éliminer toute autre possibilité ou tout autre suspect. Tant que cette tâche ne sera pas terminée, le dossier ne sera pas clos. Nous poursuivons nos consultations avec le service des poursuites de la Colombie-Britannique quant aux prochaines étapes et nous sommes conscients que la confirmation de la mort des suspects a une incidence sur les options qui s'offrent à nous. J'aimerais préciser que cette enquête a été l'une des plus dynamiques et des plus imprévisibles que la GRC de la Colombie-Britannique ait entreprise récemment. Cette enquête et l'opération de recherche qui s'en est suivie ont été menées dans plusieurs provinces et territoires, y compris des endroits extrêmement éloignés et ont touché des collectivités et des familles tant au pays qu'à l'étranger. J'aimerais remercier nos partenaires d'application de la loi au Canada, aux États-Unis et en Australie de leur soutien et de leur aide. Plus particulièrement, je tiens à exprimer ma reconnaissance à nos collègues de la GRC au Manitoba qui ont mené des recherches approfondies et difficiles dans cette province. Leur persévérance et dévouement ont donné lieu aux déclarations qui ont été faites aujourd'hui. Enfin, J'aimerais remercier nos partenaires au sein des médias à l'échelle locale et internationale qui ont joué un rôle déterminant en fournissant les dernières mises à jour de nos enquêteurs en temps opportun et de façon exhaustive. L'engagement continu du public et des médias a été essentiel pour sensibiliser la population à la situation, ce qui a permis aux policiers de recevoir régulièrement des renseignements et plus de 1000 pistes à explorer. Merci. Uh, up an opportunity to take some questions now. Uh, Inspector, as Assistant Commissioner Hackett, uh, with your two suspects dead, are you able to say anything at this point, shed any light on possible motive in this case? And also, are you able to say anything about the past of Mrs. Dick in terms of cause? Uh, I'll start with the first one. Uh, regarding the motive, it's going to be extremely difficult for us to um, ascertain definitively what the motive was. Obviously, we will not have the opportunity to speak with these individuals. And again, the examination of the area where they were located today is still being uh, dealt with and searched. So there may be additional items that uh, could help in that regard, identifying a motive, etc. But uh, we don't have that information yet. Mr. Dick? And, and Mr. Dick, um, with regard To his injuries, obviously, um, we, we're from the, we, we know what those injuries were, but out of respect for Mr. Dick's families, um, I don't believe there's any kind of operational necessity to speak to the, to the injuries out of respect and sensitivities uh, for the family's sake. Mr. Peter, you said that um, work will continue uh, to eliminate other suspects. Uh, no, that's not that's not the reason why they were charged. Um, in order to get to to the threshold of uh, charge approval status, from a crown perspective, they require information, they require evidence, and many times that evidence, as in this case, was relying on forensic evidence and forensic reports, and that sometimes takes some time. 
and understandably, until they have the definitive uh, results of those examinations, they're not in a position to, to lay charges until it happens. But we anticipated the charges were going to be uh, laid. But what evidence do you have that links the suspects to China Deason with the Stowler? Can you elaborate on that? And what linked the two crime scenes between where Dixon body was found and where the bodies of uh, Fowler and Deese were found? Well, suffice to say that there is, there is significant evidence that links both crime scenes together. Um, and that is continuing. When we speak about the ongoing effects of the investigation, that is not concluded yet. This is, this is early days for the recovery of the two suspects. Like I said, we want to bring back all of the information and all the evidence that we have. Our investigators will go through that meticulously and we'll be in a better position perhaps in the future, the near future, to talk about all of the linkages perhaps that existed. But suffice to say, there was significant evidence that linked our suspects to both crime scenes. Have you ruled out any further risk to the public with the discovery of these bodies today? I am confident that there is no further risk to the public. At this point, do you We have no information that suggests that. Um, and given the, the extreme nature of the exposure that this particular uh, investigation has had, I, I'm confident to say it's highly unlikely that if there was an offense that was linked, we would be aware of it. But there's nothing to suggest that there's any outstanding uh, offenses at this time. How did the two men found deceased near Gillum die? Can you elaborate on Pardon that? Me? How did the two men found deceased this morning die? With self-inflicted, natural causes? Can you give us some information on that? We're going to rely on the results of an autopsy, which will take place tomorrow. And, and because it's in Manitoba, that will, uh, the responsibility of, of dealing with that will be the medical examiner in, in Manitoba. Uh, and as I said, until the autopsy has been completed, until that, that uh, scene has been searched, we're not in a position to, to comment. I just don't have that answer. Is there Investigators are going through it right now. I'm sorry. Is there anyone else you're investigating for anything? You mentioned that you're still in touch with different scene prosecutions. There, there's no other suspects that we're actively looking at. No. The victims seem random from the public, but is there any evidence that this was planned in any way? We have no evidence. Uh, and again, without me looking at every piece of potential information that lies in some of these outstanding tips. Our current belief is that there is nothing that links our victims together, and there's no indication that this was, was targeted at this time. What indication have you gotten from the families of Shvigelsky and McLeod? I'm sure that you've interviewed them. Have they provided any sort of insight into what might have motivated their sons to allegedly go on a killing spree? I don't have that information currently. Are, and, you, are you able to say, uh, some of these suspects who basically told their teams managed to get across most of Western Canada and the local police. There have been some criticisms of the RCMP for allowing this to happen, for allowing these guys to go on land for so long. Are you able to say to the RCMP in British Columbia where these matters began, learn anything from this experience? Are we doing any kind of review to see if we could have done better? Is it an abuse problems earlier? Well, we're always. Uh open to looking to see how we can possibly do things better or improve our operations. From my experience and from my understanding of the measures that we took in this particular case, in these cases, uh, I think I stand by uh, our timeliness of advising the public with information when we knew it. Um, this was a dynamic and constantly evolving investigation and uh, with the help of the media we were able to get information very quickly into the hands of the public to enhance public safety. I but don't know if we could have gone much quicker than we did based how, on the information. How did these guys elude the police for so much, for so long, in such a long period of time, not several thousand years? Well, I, I don't think I need to educate anyone on the geography of this country, but it's a huge country. Um, it's, and, and the area that they traveled is in some of the areas that are most remote in this country. If you look at the distance traveled, this is like, and I looked at it on a map, this is like traveling from London to Moscow, uh, to put things into perspective. Coupled by the fact that they were traveling in areas that weren't uh, 
highly populated by uh, communities or residents that sometimes assist in locating their movements. Um, and frankly, individuals when they're on the run or trying to elude uh, the police take measures to avoid contact with both the police and the public to, uh, so they can maintain uh, the freedom for as long as they possibly can. So those factors likely have contributed to uh, their ability to, uh, to remain undetected for some time. What kind of measures? Sorry? You said they take measures to avoid being contacted by police. For example, what, what kinds of things do they do? Well, I would start, and again, I, I, I'm not in the, the mind of, of these individuals at this point, but if you, if you look at the route they took, they, they decided likely, and again, I don't know this to be a fact, but they decided to take that particular route, and I'm surmising that they chose to go on the north and not down to the south, more regularly traveled roads, because that could have enhanced uh, detection. Did you ever identify the man that was in the sketch that was seen speaking uh, of uh, No. Okay, well, I'm going to be on an issue. Um, we always heard from the families that they had left Port Alberni to look for work. Can you talk a bit about that one? Is that indeed true? Is the work that they're looking for? Can you I'm sorry, I, I don't have any information uh, in regards to that at all. I, one more question, sir. You mentioned the timeline. We weren't actually notified, as you know, until a couple of days after the bodies of Chinese Lucas Fowler were discovered. Does the BCRCP have any regrets as to how they handled this case in the early stages? Potentially, you know, could a life have been saved if there are more roadblocks up in northern BC after those bodies were discovered? Uh, I, I can't speak specifically to what other measures we could have could have taken in this particular case. Um, we we rely on the information that we have, the, the timeliness of the information. We may get information that is not verifiable until it's checked or verified, um, and it's 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 a. It's a balance sometimes before speaking with the media and giving erroneous information that could end up complicating matters. So we want to be sure before we alert the public's assistance that we're actually looking for the right type of vehicle, etc. And we also want to examine evidence as it comes in. We may get hundreds of tips, which may include the examination, the detailed examination of hours of surveillance uh, cameras or video, for etc. That takes time. And um, you know that that played a role in us uh, assisting us in this investigation. At the conclusion of this investigation, okay, there ever be I understand you have many questions. Mm -hmm. and there ever be attempts to release this information to the public? Once you've concluded your investigations, will there be any kind of opportunity to sort of lay out to the public what exactly happened in this case? There may be an opportunity for that in the future, but uh, I'm not in a position to speak about that today. Just Thank, you. Thank you very much. Charges only in relation to Dick, but not to Fowler and the That's right. Okay. Thank you.